Let's talk about five things I wish I knew before I became a Jira administrator. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you want to share your journey into becoming a Jira administrator with me and the community, let me know down below in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's discussion. I've been a Jira administrator for a little over six years now. And while the first five years of my career as a Jira administrator, I took it very, very light. It was not a serious thing that I did. It was my job. It's what I got paid to do. And I just came to work and did the Jira administration. Within the last year and a half though, I really, really doubled down. I decided to go all in and push all my chips into this Jira tool and I decided to become an expert in it. I now have the opportunity, the ability to look back and reflect at over my six year career here within the world of world of Jira. And I wanna answer and talk about, discuss, really vent about five things that I wish I would have known a long time ago that I now know today that would have made my life six years ago way, way easier. Number one, not everything needs to be automated. Jira has powerful automations. There's triggers, there's hooks, there's so much automation that can be built into Jira, but every once in a while, it is okay to just do it, to just do it manually. And I just feel like today, I have so much more appreciation because every request that I get is, can we automate this, can we automate that? And while automation is great, I believe in it, I love it. I'm all about being lean and efficient, just every once in a while, just having that human element back in the loop is really, really powerful. Six years ago, I would have just done all the automations because I just wanted to save time and obviously be more efficient. But today I realize that there's so much more to just automating your work and there's really a lot of human to human components or elements to this job that I wish I would have taken a little bit more serious way back when I started my career. Number two, not everything needs to be configured. Just because Jira is infinitely customizable doesn't mean that you should infinitely customize Jira. It starts to become a really, really big Jira administrator headache when you have so many customizations. Because not only do you have to go through the trouble of customizing Jira and having the skill set to do it, but you gotta support. You this these projects are long living. And sometimes I'm supporting things for one, two, three years out into the future. And anytime that somebody wants to make a change, I have to go back and remember what I did a year ago. And when somebody changes, when there's like a personnel change or somebody gets laid off or somebody new comes on board, whenever they want to make changes, it's like, holy moly, I got to relearn everything that I did and all the decisions that I did years ago and hope and pray that I don't forget to do something because there's just so much happening, so much convolution happening in the way that pre that project is configured that it just becomes a maintenance nightmare. So six years ago version of me, I would have pushed back a lot harder. Back then I was just like, yes, whatever you want, let's make it happen. But today, more mature version of me, I like to take a little step back and I like to pause and I like to challenge every request that comes my way and really ask them, do we need to make this configuration or is there something out of the box that we can do? Because like I said, I back then I didn't really appreciate and or at least I didn't have the ability to see into the future and realize how much trouble <laughs> every single one of these configurations is going to cause me in the future. So looking back, I would definitely be way more mindful of all these configurations that you can do in Jira because not everything needs to be a configuration in Jira. Number three, I wish I would have taken advantage of a sandbox. When I first started out in Jira, I was in the data center version, so there's really no sandbox there, but I wish that I would have had the foresight to know that a sandbox idea, a playground, if you will, I wish I would have known about that because I learned so much of Jira through making mistakes in production. I got scolded by my management in the early stages of my career by breaking production. That is not the way that I would encourage anyone to learn. If you're in the cloud, especially if you're in premium, you get a free sandbox. If you're not in premium, Jira is completely free. You can do almost everything. I would say like 80, 85% of Jira is completely customizable and available to you for free. And, or if you're in the data center, you can just get a trial license and set up your own environment and play in that environment. 
But the takeaway here is six years ago, I didn't leverage the fact that I could play and experiment somewhere that was in production. And now I value how valuable it is to have a place to experiment. I don't always know the answers. I don't always have a solution to every request or every problem that I encounter. And so having a safe place, a place that I can quickly tear down or build back up again is very, very rewarding. It's very, very humbling. And it's very, very comforting as well, because I know that I can take my skills to the next level without necessarily impacting production. I know that I have a safe place to go and experiment, try things out, figure things out, because that's ultimately how you learn the best. You're not going to learn by reading the documentation, which rolls into my point number four. I spent so much of my early years reading through Atlassian's documentation, reading every guide. The data center version of the Atlassian documentation was years ahead of their cloud documentation. So back then I used to print out, I had like 600 pages of how to use Jira server. And I read through all of it, but I read through it. I didn't do it. And so going, mixing kind of point three and point four here is I would now, and now that I know, and now that I'm in the my more mature state here, I would tell six year version of me, don't worry, don't waste your time reading through that documentation. Invest your time in trying to solve problems. There's an entire Atlassian community out there where folks are uploading questions every single day. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of questions that are just available for anybody to go and answer. And that to me is truly the best way to learn. Today, when again, talking about point number four is don't read the documentation. Instead, favor experimentation, try things out, have that sandbox, have that playground where you can just try because by doing it, by actually making the changes, by actually breaking stuff, by actually fixing stuff, that's how I learned the quickest. I'm able to really, really know Jira really, really well, not because I'm so much smarter or better than anyone else, but because I invest hours out of my day, out of my week to explicitly go and try to break Jira. And I let my curiosity drive me to take my skills to the next level where I'm constantly just like, how does this work? What does this do? Why does it do it this way? And I'm able to do that now. And I value that so much more. I can't tell you when's the last time I actually read an Atlassian document because I just, Atlassian's documentation is very subpar in my opinion. And finally, point number five and something that I've been taking to heart as of December of 2021. And that is, I wish I would have told myself six years ago to just share your knowledge. I now run this YouTube channel where I share everything that I do and everything that I know about Jura. And while most people, their insecurity would prevent them from doing that because there is value in thinking you have job security when you're the only one that knows how to do something. But what I've realized is when you master these skills, especially at the level that I have mastered them, it's not that there's competition for somebody to take your job away. I think six years version of me would have thought, oh no, if I tell somebody how to do it, then I'm replaceable. And I've learned over these last six years, and it's a really hard lesson to learn, that the more you know and the more you share, the higher your career goes. Because you become the expert because there's a lot of calories. There's a lot of energy needed for someone to replace you. They have to want it more than you. So as long as you want that success or that skill set more than your competition, nobody's going to come and take your job. But because you're sharing your information, because you're broadcasting everything you know, your skills just keep doubling and doubling and they grow exponentially while everybody else is still growing more in a logarithmic fashion. So I think that's a little misconception that I wish I would have known six years ago because I didn't know that growth was like this when you're copying. I now know that growth is exponential when you're sharing, when you're putting it out there, when you're teaching folks, when you're evangelizing what you know, you actually grow significantly quicker than the people listening. And so those are the five things that I wish I would have known six years ago when I first started this journey. I'm excited to know that I treat today as my day one of the next six years. I'm grateful for what I know today. I'm grateful for the mistakes that I've done because I'm looking back and taking lessons learned from each and every one of those mistakes. 
and I'm optimistic about where I'm going to take this channel and my career in the future. And I'm excited to share it with everybody and I'm excited to bring everybody along for the journey. So if you made it this far and you like this video, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, share it with anybody else that you think might benefit from hearing this message. And as always, make sure you smash that like button as it does help grow this channel significantly as YouTube likes to promote videos that are being interacted with. So drop a comment. If I touched your heart or if I touched the nerve, let me know in the comment section below as well. And if you're interested in taking a paid course with me, all of that information is in the link in the description below. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.